morning, Family Worship Center. My name is Austin Yanni. I'm the worship leader here at FWC, and I'm so excited you're tuning into our live stream this morning. It's going to be a great day here at church. I'm really excited. We just got out of our 9 a.m. service, and um, it was so powerful. We had a time of worship, and it was awesome. Pastor Tyler spoke today, and we're in our... Um, last installment, part three of our series, As It Is In Heaven. And he um, gave an incredible message today about um, how heaven can come into your life, how you can live out um, the will of God in your life and, and be like heaven on earth and, and experience that in your life. So it was incredible. I'm so excited for you to tune in um, to this, uh, this service. It's uh, going to be awesome. Uh, if you are in the Sioux City area and you've been watching us online, next Sunday is Easter, and I want to extend an, a personal invite to you um, to come and check out our Easter service. We have three services. We have a sign right there, actually. It's 8.30, um, 10, and 11.30 a.m. Three services um, next Sunday, and I want to invite you. Um, bring somebody, bring your family, bring your friends, um, and check us out because it's a great Sunday to start coming to church on Easter. So I'm excited about that. And I'm going to pray and we're going to get into our service. So Lord, I thank you so much for what you're doing. I pray that you would move through these cameras, move through these microphones um, and touch um, the people that are watching, touch their hearts, move wherever they are in their living room, in their car, um, with their kids. If they're by themselves, I pray that you would be present with them wherever they are, whatever they're facing um, today. And I pray that they would be ministered to by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get into our service.
Welcome to church this morning. Glad to see you all here. Come on, let's put our hands together and worship the Lord. If you're joining us online, sing this with me. He shaves every idol. He raises without rival. He goes by the name of Jehovah, Jehovah. He speaks in another Hey, and darkness goes dry.
，最后不打扰你有你，最后不 love you your boy， 最后不 shallow be your be。
Jesus, we pray that heaven would be on earth in this place. Right now, we welcome you. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit of Atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around yes. that the spirit of the Lord is here. It's overflow in this place. Let it be the cry of your heart, family worship. Sound. 
sacrificial blood we thank you for the sacrifice you made for us let us never forget we love you Lord
Oh, he is worthy. He is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our worship this morning. You are worthy, oh God. We love you. We invite your holy presence into our lives today to move and do as you desire to do. Thank you, Father. Just thank him this morning. Just say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen to the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You know, today is Palm Sunday. It's next week. Next Sunday, we're celebrating the death, burial, resurrection of Christ and all that it means in our lives. And then and this Sunday, he would have come down from the Mount of Olives and, and on a donkey prophetically from the book of Zacharias. As the King of Israel, he would have ridden down through the Kidron Valley up into the east gate of the city. People were shouting Hosanna in the highest. And then later that week on Thursday in the evening, as they began the Passover celebration, he sat with his disciples and he gave a new emphasis to the Passover that had been celebrated for hundreds and hundreds for millennia. But Christ gave it a new meaning. And he took bread. And if you'll, if you'll reach down in, in the seat pocket in front of you, there is a communion cup just for you. And we would like to celebrate this Last Supper together. And we invite you to join with us and you just take this and you bend this little tab downward and that plastic will pop up and you can open that and take that wafer out. And Jesus sat and he took, in the book of Matthew, took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Now they didn't know what he was talking about. They didn't know he was going to be crucified. They didn't know his body would be broken and abused and destroyed. But he said, this is my body that's broken for you. Jesus was broken for you. For what reason? So you could be made whole. That's his will for you. So let's thank him and let's take the bread together. The Bible says at the end of the supper, he took a cup And he said to the disciples, he said, drink you all of this. This is my blood of the new covenant. See, Christ fulfilled the whole old covenant and he began a new covenant in him. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it, all of it. It is for the remission of your sins. So we just thank him today because of what Jesus did his blood being poured out on that cross. Because of that, I can be forgiven. I can have the hope of eternal life, of, of heaven for my eternal destiny. That's the only reason we can go to heaven is because this blood was poured out on the cross. So thank him today and let's drink it together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We thank you. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, everybody. What a great group on a, not the best weather, but you did it. You got up, you came to church and he's here. I'm Pastor Bill. I want to welcome you, um, especially if you're watching online. We welcome you as well. Why don't you turn to somebody this morning, give them a high five and just say, man, I'm glad you're in the house. Just tell them, I'm glad you're in the house. Amen. Awesome. We're just really excited. We have Pastor Tyler Sanchez is going to bring the word today. You're just going to be so blessed. It's an awesome word. This is our second service today. And so, and I just want to welcome you. And, and um, we have a lot going on. We're going to run a video in just a moment. But just to let you know, in two weeks, two, two Sundays from now, we're going to have a water baptism, okay? And we, we bought a brand new baptismal, okay? 
So if, if this is going to be your baptism, you're going to be blessed. You're going to inaugurate a brand new baptism and we're going to have it up here on a Sunday on both services. You can sign up for either service. You can do that out in our hub, which is right out in the lobby. You'll see some iPads and you just click on water baptism, sign up for that. We've got everything you'll need. Um, you can also do that online um, on our website or on the church app. So we're just excited for that. If you have not been water baptized, that, that's your next step then. To first to, to know Christ, but if you know him and you've not been water baptized, that's our next step. So we've got some great things in store for you and, and we're excited. Let's go ahead and, and, and just check out our weekend update. Hey, my name is Austin and I serve as the worship leader here at FWC. If you're new to Family Worship Center, we would love to get to know you. You can scan the QR code or grab the card in the seat pocket in front of you and fill out our Connect card. And if you are joining us online, text CONNECT to 712-639-6571. And if it's your first time to join us today, don't leave without your free gift in the lobby. Here at FWC, we believe that God has called us to live a life of generosity. We want to give you a special opportunity to make an internal investment in our city by giving into what God is doing right here at our church. On the screen, you'll see a few different ways to give. And if you'd like to give by cash or check because you're here in person, you can drop it in the black box by the doors when you leave. Thank you for making an internal investment into the kingdom of God. We have an amazing opportunity for you to take your next step in your journey at FWC. Join us today directly after the 11 a.m. service for Growth Track. Growth Track is a two hour session where you will learn the history, vision, and heart of FWC and decide if this is the right church for you. We believe it's God's plan for every Christ follower to be an active member of a local church body, not just a spectator. We wanna help you in that process. Also, we provide tools that will enable you to discover how God designed you and his specific purpose and calling for your life so you can serve him with your gifts and passions and make a difference. Plus, we will have a delicious lunch for you and your whole family, and your kids will be taken care of by our dream team. Register at fwcsuecity.com. Easter at FWC is going to be epic. From an inspiring message from Pastor Bill, to Easter egg hunts for the kids, family photo opportunities, and so much more. There's nothing like celebrating our risen Savior together in His house. We invite you to join us for one of our three services on March 31st at 8.30, 10, or 11.30. Hey, I'm Mo, and I've been leading the youth group here, Elevated Youth, on Wednesday nights for about a year now. And this is Josh. We are engaged, and he's gonna, this is new, fresh. He's gonna be leading the youth group with me on Wednesday nights. We're so excited. Come join us if you're a sixth through 12th grade student, or if you're a parent of that age group, bring your kid seven to 815 on Wednesday nights. We're super excited. VBS registration is open. This is a free event for your kids, and it will be the best week of their whole summer. Mark your calendar June 24th through the 27th, 9 a.m. to 12, for ages four years to sixth grade. Register your kids or register yourself to volunteer at fdbcsuecity.com slash VBS. Hey dudes, you ready to eat some food? Come and hang out at our next 10-4 men's breakfast Saturday, April 6th at 8 a.m. Register on the website or at the hub in the lobby. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome home. My name is Thomas, and I'm from Germany. And my name is Patricia, and I'm from Brazil. And our desire is for God's presence to be on earth as it is in heaven. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Vater unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie im Himmel, so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie wir auch vergeben unsere Schuldigen. Und führe führ uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns vom Bösen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. And now I'm going to pray over our service. Amado Deus, Criador do Céu e Criador da Terra, 
Eu lhe peço ao Senhor que o Senhor abençoe o dia de hoje, abençoe este culto, abençoe o pastor Bill, que ele possa transmitir a sua vontade, ó oh Deus, a sua vontade, as suas palavras no coração do pastor Bill. E abençoe também este dia com, e todos que estão aqui presentes, ó oh Deus, os seus familiares. Eu lhe peço no nome do Senhor Jesus Cristo. Amém. Amém. A line in one of the songs we sung this morning says, you are the reason we are here, and that is Jesus. So the reason you're here is not to be entertained. Uh, the reason you're here is to not watch me preach or to watch the band perform or to go, oh, that's my favorite song. Now I can enter into worship. But you're here because of Jesus Christ is being proclaimed and the word of God is being preached. And then you have a decision to make. Do you accept that word of God and then apply it to your life? Because we live in a really, really dark world. Raise your hand if you agree with that, that there's darkness all around us. And it's not far off to be able to scroll a couple times on social media or tune into the news and you just hear about the darkness. You hear about tragedy or evil or corruption or, or the indoctrination of the worldly views into our children and into our uh, everyday lifestyle. The other day, Alicia was watching a show called Vita the Vet. It's on Netflix. And uh, it's about this little girl who takes care of these animals and... Show looked good on the outside, everything was fine watching it, and uh, gets to the very end, and she walks in and says, hey dads, and walks into a house with two dads. That's the darkness that we live in, and that's the, the indoctrination that is seeping into the next generation. And as I stand here today, I, I sometimes question or get worried, like, man, how dark can it get? Like, how much more can they continue to attack Christians or attack the church? And what is it going to look like when my daughters are adults? Like, what is that world going to look like? I don't know if you get w w a little nervous or anxious about that, but like, how, how dark is the darkness we're going to experience in this earth? John 16, 33 says, in this world, you will have trouble. See, it doesn't come as a shock to God. God's not up there like, oh, ah, whoa, the world's getting dark. Didn't know that was going to happen. James says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, not if, or you possibly, potentially might be, uh, no, 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 like when it happens, when trouble comes your way, count it all joy. And so, so what, what happens is sometimes is we just write off this world, right? We just go like, oh man, I just can't wait to get to heaven. You ever met someone like that? And you're like, hey, how's your day? And they're like, one day closer to heaven. You're like, oh, it's kind of morbid. You should enjoy being here. And, and I say that to say that if, like, we all have an appointed time to die and, and God is in control and his will is, is being played out in our life, so therefore, if you are here, then you have a plan and purpose. Like, if you're still breathing, then God wants to still use you to do things in this world. And we shouldn't just walk uh, through life spending quiet time with Jesus with our head down longing for the day we can get to heaven. I think we're missing that if we do that. I think we're missing the purpose that God has placed us on this earth to do is if all we want to do is just get to heaven. I think we should want to be and get to heaven and bring as many people with us as possible. And we do that by interacting with people around us because heaven will be no more tears, pain, sadness, hurt, sickness. But what if, what if we could bring heaven on earth? What, what if we could do that? What if we could have moments of, of on earth just like it is in heaven, where, where there is no pain and no hurt or sadness or a glimpse of that. And I think, um, I put it this way, for Christians, this is as bad as it gets. Earth is our hell. Some of you are like, I know. And for non-Christians, this is as good as it gets. Earth right now and what they're experiencing, this is their heaven. This is as best as it's going to get for the people that don't know Jesus Christ and can't step into eternity. And, and as we contemplate that and think about that, we, we get the series from Matthew 6, 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, everyone worships God and cries out holy, all angels obey, and on earth we don't do that. We have free will and we make the choice, and, but one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, but until that time, what are we supposed to do? 
Let's break down those three lines. Your kingdom come. See, God's kingdom is not one of physical territory. It's not one of like conquering and taking over or like this is where God's kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom that fights principalities and evils. It's not against flesh and blood and we don't battle for the kingdom of God. Verse uh, John 18, verse 36 says, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. He, he, he led himself into captivity and into being arrested. They didn't fight and battle and say and conquer the Roman government. Daniel 7, 14 says, we, he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and people of every language worshiped him. That's why you see the bumper video before the sermons uh, of people praying in other languages. It's all ethnicities, all races. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. That picture or that image is what it should look like here at Family Worship Center, it is what it should look like in Sioux City, and so we want that kingdom right now. I heard one amen. Hopefully you guys are, are all in agreement with that, right? That that's what it should look like. Heaven come down right now in this city. Have your way. And so what we're talking about is having the world of heaven overlap the world of earth. And what does that look like? And how does that take place? And how many times does that overlap? And that's what we're going to break down. You heard it already said today that today's Palm Sunday and it's the start of the Holy Week. And Jesus comes in riding on a donkey and they take his cloaks and, and they lay their cloaks on the ground and they take palm trees and leaves and lay that on the ground. He's, he's, he's walking in and it's like they roll out the red carpet for him. And the people are chanting in Matthew, it tells us, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And what they're chanting and what that phrasing actually kind of interprets to is save us. Like, save us now, O Holy One. That son of David lets us know that uh, he is from the lineage of David, which the Savior of the world, the Messiah, was coming from. And so what he's saying in this moment is, they're saying, like, finally our king is here. Finally the Savior of the world is coming down. It's being fulfilled in the Old Testament. This is the Savior of the Jews. This is God's kingdom, and he's going to overthrow what they thought was the Roman Empire and, and government and politicians, and, and they're going to step into this new kingdom. And so they're super excited. Save us now. This is our king. Hallelujah. Quickly, if you know the story, what happened just a few days later, they begin to now chant, crucify him. The Jews were placed with the decision to release Barabbas, a, a robber, or Jesus. Someone who, who healed the sick. Someone who came in for the down and out. Who did nothing but help the city. Or a robber. A criminal. And they were like, no, no, no. Give us the robber and crucify Jesus, John 19, 15. Away with him, away with him, crucify him. So, so how, how did they go from Hosanna in the highest to, to crucify him? And I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll read scripture and I'll like see how the disciples um, answered and the questions they had and the mistakes they make. And I'm like, man, they are, they're just stupid. Do you guys ever do that? Like, how would they make that choice? The same thing here. It's like, man, Jesus is healing people. He's like, he's doing good deeds. And they're like, yeah, crucify him. And then I'm like, well, we kind of do that. You're like, no, we don't, Pastor Tyler. I need some examples. I got some. You pray for a new job and you're like, my savior, my king, provide me the new job. It is, save us. He provides you the new job, but you, after a couple months, don't like your boss or coworkers. And you're like, crucify him. You pray for a spouse and then you get your spouse and you get married and the honeymoon stage is over and you're a year or two into it and they are leaving the toothpaste caps off the toothpaste or leaving socks on the ground. And you're like, crucify him. Put the seat down. Uh, you pray for a house and the water heater and the dishwasher go out in the same week because they always usually go out in like twos, probably threes. Uh, and you're like, ah, crucify him. God, where are you? You know who doesn't worry about a water heater or a dishwasher? Someone who doesn't own a house. You get a new car and you complain about gas prices. You know who doesn't complain about gas prices? Someone who doesn't own a car. Maybe you're, you pray for kids and then you get three girls and you have one on the way and do May 3rd and you don't ever get to sleep through the night fully and they control every part of your life. This is not a personal experience. This, is, this happens to be just a random example. Uh, 
And you like you eat standing up in the kitchen while you serve them food that they never eat and they don't like. And then you end up just giving them mac and cheese because they cried for an hour and a half. Uh, you pick up toys all day. You watch Gabby's Dollhouse on the big screen while you watch March Madness on your phone crying on the couch. I don't know if that's it. <laughs> I don't know if that's you in here or not, but it's not me. Um, and you're like, crucify him, right? God, where are you? Obviously, we don't say crucify him, but we say things like, uh, God, if you're all-powerful and all-knowing, then why did you allow? And if, God, you are love, then why did you allow? And, God, if you really cared, you would have. And if you heard my prayers, you would have. And, God, you don't see me and you don't understand. And, God, you don't provide because they have and I don't. See, the real issue is followed by the next line, your kingdom come, but your will be done. That's the fight that we have every single day. It's God's will versus our will. God's way versus our way. God's plan and purpose for your life in living according to biblical truth and righteousness versus what our flesh wants to do and what we want to do and what we want to partake in. See, because God's promise is not that you live a life without struggles or issues. Let's go back to the verse John 16, 33. I only read a part of it and I did it intentionally because this is the first part. Listen, it says this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. He's letting them know like, hey, listen, let me tell you this because you're going to have peace, which is a weird thing to say right before you follow it up with, in this world you'll have trouble. Let me tell you something that's going to make you real happy. It's going to be, I promise, it's going to bring peace in your life. You're going to have a lot of trouble. But then he follows that up with, but take heart, I have overcome the world. See, we we worship Jesus not because he just died for the sins of this world, but he also he died for the things that you face. And he's overcome the things that you battle every single day. So what is God's will? Well, simply put, God's will is that everyone knows him. That everyone be in a right relationship with him. And so how does the will of God um, play out in individuals' lives? How does righteousness, I just jotted this down for righteousness, it's right living in God, with God and humanity. So it's, it's living right according to God's plan. My relationship with God, is my in right living with God, righteousness. And my in right living with people around me, not according to people around me, but according to God. So is my relationship with God in right standing and in righteousness? Is my relationship with people around me in right standing in the eyes of God? And what we have to understand is that pl- that takes place or takes specific paths for each one of us differently. Uh, Matthew twenty five forty says, and the king will answer them. Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. See, the least of these looks different for each one of us. And if the least of these looked the same for all of us, it wouldn't make sense. But the least of these looks different because we all have a different burden in our heart. We all see things in this world that we go, ah, that doesn't, that doesn't sit well with me. Or I don't like the way that is. Or I, would, I think we could change that. Or if we we're in that area of the city, we could bring dead things to life. And we could see that being changed. See, a passion and a burden that I have is for the local church. Working with Pastor Bill and Trish to see how, how do we get the local church to have an impact in Sioux City. Many of you probably don't wake up in the morning and think about that or go to bed at night and like you can't fall asleep so you have to go out on the couch and jot some things down. Like, and that's not saying mine's better than yours, but we have different burdens. How do we get people to step into church and hear the word of God and then leave and apply it to their life? Another burden I have is, is to see the next generation know that God has called them right now. See, I gave my life to Jesus and it passionately started chasing after him when I was 20 years old. Like, I made some mistakes along the way. What if you could get a seventh grader to passionately chase after Jesus and not walk away? Not say, when I get an adult, when I'm 32, but no, like right now. That probably doesn't keep some of you up at night. That's probably not something you're striving for in your life, but maybe it's homelessness in Sioux City, or maybe it's the food pantry, or maybe it's mental health or addiction, or maybe it's her health, or maybe it's the foster system. I don't know what it is, but there's something that's burdened you that God has given you the the least of these in your life. And then you are to bring the message of Jesus through God's plan and purpose in your life and his will to be done in your life. John 4, 34, we see Jesus's will. Jesus said to him, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. He's saying, listen, all all these things don't really matter because I'm placed on this earth to do what God has called me to do. What if we got to a place like that? And I'm not, you're like, Tyler told me not to eat lunch today. No, listen, I'm going to eat lunch. But, but you got to a place where you were like, man, all the other things don't really matter. 
but what God has called me to do in his will in my life. So how do we bring heaven on earth? How do we bring heaven to the city, that last line, on earth as it is in heaven, in Sioux City as it is in heaven, in Sioux Land as it is in heaven. We gotta go back to the Garden of Eden where humanity and, and God walked hand in hand. They were able to be with each other because sin had not entered into the world and their relationship was uh, unified and together and man sinned and broke that unity and separated it. And so now from that point on, man and God could not be together because God is all holy, all perfect, and man is sinful. God can't be with sin. And so the only time that overlapped then again throughout the Old Testament was in the Holy of Holies where the presence of God resided, or when God, in special moments, decided to come down and to speak to his people. God's presence and, and um, the ability to step into God's presence was through a sacrificial system. We're back on. Is it happening again? All right, we'll see. Okay, so it, it, through a sacrificial system that uh, absorbed sin by sacrificing an animal. So you sacrifice an animal, that animal then absorbed the sin of the person making the sacrifice. And that process went along. So you sacrifice animals, therefore you could have your sins forgiven. And then Jesus came and brought the presence of God in, into earth and on earth. And then he had moments through his ministry where he brought heaven down, where you saw miracles take place. Two things Jesus did when he died. Number one, he took on the punishment of all sin. Romans 5, 19, for as by one man's disobedience, Adam, the, man, the many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, Jesus, the many will be made righteous. No longer do we have to animal sacrifice to step into the presence of God. Number two, the veil that separated the holy of holies was torn. Therefore, the presence of God is everywhere at all times and resides in us those that have Jesus as their Lord and Savior, those that have professed Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior and believed in their heart. See, Jesus created moments of that happening. And now God's presence is everywhere. And we have the ability to step into that. See, Jesus, Pastor Bill said it perfectly. He didn't come to do away with the law. He didn't come and say, hey, the old way of doing it, well, we're not doing that anymore. He came to fulfill the law. He came to be the ultimate sacrifice for us to bring it to completion. John 14, 12 says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these. We see that Jesus brought moments of heaven on earth through miracles and through healing and then he tells his disciples, hey, whoever believes in me, you can go and do these same things. He doesn't say uh, uh, to the disciples in the room or just the people listening to my voice, you guys can do this. He says, whoever believes. That means you and I. That means anyone that believes can do the things that he's done, the miracles that have performed. And then the next line says, greater things, greater things than these. I first was like, okay, Jesus walked on water. Like, can we fly? Like, we could do greater things. No, no it's, it's in quantity. It's in distribution. It's into the masses. See, Jesus says, listen, I can, do, I can do a moment here, and then I can do a moment here, and then I can do a moment here, but what if the 12 of you went out and did 12 moments a day? And then what if 110 or whoever, how many ever we have in here, you go out and you have moments and do the same things Jesus did. And then you got multiple churches in Siouxland that all preach a, a gospel message, and they believe they can do that. Then what does our city look like? That's the greater things. See, because I believe that miracles still take place today. I believe that, that miracles can still take place today. Over a year ago, my wife was healed from celiac disease. And, and, and I just believe that, man, we prayed for that for 11 years. Some people hear that and go, oh, you prayed for it one time and she was healed. No, no, for like 11 years. Every prayer service, every time she, there was an opportunity to get anointed with oil and to pray. And that's just, that's not all the people that have been praying or knew about her, her symptoms and her issues. If, you, if you're taking notes, jot it, please write it down this way. When, when someone comes to you and, and talks about healing, say this phrase or a phrase like this. He is able, and we are praying he will. He can, and we are believing he will. See, because I think what happens sometimes in the church is we get, um, we get a little ahead of ourselves, and we tell people, 
you're going to be healed. I, I don't know if you're going to be healed because that's the will of God and I don't know the will of God for your life. I know he is able to heal. I know that anything you face in this world, God has overcome and God is greater than that. So I believe he will, but I don't know if he's going to heal you. My grandmother passed away of cancer. Why wasn't she healed? I don't know. But I believed that she was going to be healed until she wasn't healed. And then I have faith in Jesus to know that that is now God's will for her, her life. And that, and that he will pull me through the trials and I'll count it all joy. And then that her healing is on this side of eternity or on the other side of eternity. So he is able and we are believing that he will. What would our city look like if, if sickness, if we could go around and pray for people and sickness was healed and jobs were provided for and, and, and wombs that were barren were, were able to see life developed and marriages restored and family members that don't know Jesus come home and, and addictions broken? Like, what would our city look like if we all believed every day those things can happen, that we can encounter a moment where heaven is on earth for a moment? And we all walked through our life looking for those moments to where we can bring heaven down. So how do we do this practically? And like, what does this look like in our life practically? Jeremiah 17, five through eight says this, thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man. Where's your trust at? And makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. When you do that, this is what you'll look like. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come and shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness and in inhabited salted land. You're going to be a shrub in the desert if you put your trust and your hope in man, in the economy, in politicians, in elections, in things of this world. You're, you're going you're, you're gonna to not survive as soon as I say that, some people say this. Well, I know some very successful, non-godly people. Or I know some people that aren't living according to God's plan and purpose, but they're very successful. Well, in the eyes of who? Like success for in, in what? Go back to what I said earlier, that if, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ and you put your trust in this, then this is your heaven. They're experiencing heaven. That's as bad as, it, this is as good as it's going to get for them. So maybe that's why. Maybe Satan is giving them things of this world so they stay in that idea of, of trust in man. Verse 7 and 8 tells us what we need to do. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is, in, is the Lord. Verse 8, he is like a tree planted by water, by, by the living water, that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. That's what our life should look like. That we're planted by the streams of living water, and you don't just hear a message, but you dive into a, a sermon on a Sunday, and you take notes, and then throughout the week, you're listening and reading scripture, and then you're diving your roots even deeper, and not allowing a pastor to be the person that only spiritually feeds you, but you're doing it on your own. And then when the drought comes and when the heat comes, you can still have green leaves and bear fruit so that people walking through the desert goes, okay, shrub, 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 tree with fruit. What's, what's that about? Like, why does that tree have fruit when no one else, why does that tree act different when no one else is? And, and, and it's too late to try to do this in the drought. I grew up playing sports and I know some athletes in here. You can't hydrate just a half hour before the game. Like, you, you know, there's a couple kids probably on your team that, like, right before the game, they're just, like, they're eating, like, five bananas, and they're chugging a Gatorade. They're like, oh, i got to stay hydrated so I don't cramp. You're like, ah, oh, it's too late, buddy. Like, you're going to puke all that up, and then you're still going to cramp. Like, 24 to 48 hours, 72 hours prior to the event, you got to be hydrated. That's, like, when drought comes, you can't be like, okay, now let's dive deep. Let's get our roots in. It's a little too late when the heat comes. It's a little too late in the year of the drought. So what does your fruit look like? Because we don't talk about this a lot because it, it feels very judgmental. But, but scripture does tell us to judge the tree by its fruits. And so there's moments in your life that you have to have people in your life that will tell you like, hey, you're not bearing fruit. And that doesn't have to be everyone. And it's not your job to be the one like, I want to be the one that tells people they're not bearing fruit. No, no, it's got to be specific people in your life that you have a relationship with. Like a spouse, a family member, 
a pastor, a mentor, and there's people in your life that should say like, hey, listen, your life's looking a lot like a barren shrub in the desert. I'm not seeing the fruit of your life. Because when you do, then people go like, why are you the way you are? You're like, I've been asked that my whole life. Well, that's because you're weird, but I uh, know. Like, how can you have joy in, in a tough time? And how can you control your emotions? And how when you're in the valley, you don't act like you're in the valley? And how can when stress and anxiety hit, you still stay even keel? And when tragedy strikes your family, like you, you are able to have peace in the midst of? How do you do that? How are you bearing fruit in the desert? And then that's when we say, because of Jesus. If someone was to ask you, what does your life look like? Do you bear any of these fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control? Would anyone in your life say, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, those, those fruit are evident in his life? Or those fruit are evident in her life? You're like, some of you are like, I got two out of the nine. I don't, I don't think that's passing. See, we want miracles. We want to see the sick healed and the lame walk and the, and the blind see but sometimes we just don't want to be kind. And sometimes we just don't want to be gentle and caring and loving. I wrote it this way in regards to self-control. You can share the message of Jesus in what you don't say. So many times we go through life and we go like, oh, share, your, share the message of Jesus with your waitress and share the message of Jesus with the person who cuts your hair and share the message. Do that. But also share the message of Jesus in the things you don't say, in the email you don't send. And the thing you don't post on social media. I don't, I, I'm working on this too because I'm, I'm very quick with my words and sometimes I get ahead of myself. Anyone else that way? And so what I've been trying to do is I'll, I'll type out the text message, like what I really want to say, and then I'll delete it. Anyone else do that? I'm working. Pastor Bill, don't judge me. I, I'm trying to get to the place where I don't even type it out, but I'm not there yet. So I'll like, maybe, maybe I just, I mean, this is just me, but I'll like, I'll have the whole conversation in my head do you guys do that? I'm like, okay, when, when he gets there, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to do this. And then he's probably going to say this, and then I'm going to say that. And then, then I feel like I had the conversation. I don't actually have to have it. I'm, wor- I'm a work in progress. We all are. I'm trying not to, to not have that little moment where I like really tell them what I think. But, but sometimes you share the message of Jesus without, by not having that conversation, by deleting the text message before you send it. What would our city look like if, if we swapped these things, which will be on the screen behind us, anger to peace, rudeness to kindness, gossip to quiet prayers. Because sometimes we pray for people, but it's really gossip. We're like, oh, dude, guess what he just told me? His life, uh, this and this happened and that happened, but we should probably pray for him, right? And you're really not worried about the prayer. You're really kind of just talking about gossip. What if, or, or, or sometimes I've been guilty of this, I like, some, a, a name will pop in my head that I need to pray for, and, and instead of just praying for them, I let them know how holy I am. Like, hey, your name popped in my head, and I spent two hours praying for you and your family today. I don't know if they need to know that. Maybe you just pray, and you just trust that your prayers will be heard by God, and then God will speak to them. Hatred for love, busyness for patience, fear for faithfulness, aggressiveness for gentleness, And then we take these things that we're changing in our life and we apply them to to the coffee, when you're at the coffee shop and when you're driving. See, maybe you can, maybe you drive with the bumper sticker that says like, honk twice if you love Jesus. But maybe you just don't flip the bird to people when they cut you off in traffic. I think they both preach a message of Jesus. And maybe when you're in the school pickup line, you're not like honking and screaming at people because the school pickup line, will will test your salvation. Mike Santiago, a pastor I follow, said this this week, and I thought it was perfect. It says, God's anointing is the glory of God clothed in obedience. So many of us want to pray for the anointing, and God is just saying, just be obedient to bring the fruits of the Spirit to every area of your life. And in those moments where heaven comes down, then we pray for opportunity when we're faithful and when we're kind and when we're loving and we're caring that a miracle can take place. Doing what we're called to do, being very simple. I tell students this, you love people because you are a loving person, not because they deserve love. You, you care for people because you are a caring person, not because they deserve your care. You can replace that with anyone. You, you give people respect because you're respectable. You give people honor because you're honorable. So many times we go, well, they don't deserve it, or he doesn't deserve it, or she doesn't deserve it. Yeah, but you don't deserve it either. 
you didn't deserve Jesus' love. You didn't deserve God's sacrifice. So we love because he first loved us. Jesus came to earth, and we have to understand if we go back to the Garden of Eden where man uh, made a mistake and separated the relationship between God and men, that man then had to restore that relationship. A perfect man, the perfect sacrifice, is the only thing that restored that relationship. So when Jesus came down to earth, he was fully 100% man. And he used and did miracles because the presence of God worked through him. That's why he says, now you can do what I did. Anyone that believes like I believed, you can do that same thing too. If that's not true, then Jesus wouldn't have told us that. If that's not true, Jesus wouldn't have said that because the problem is if he is only operating as fully God, then we can't perform miracles because we're not fully God. So he had to be fully man and walk through this life for 33 years without any sin. And he had to put his trust in, in God because scripture says without faith it is impossible to please God. And so since he pleased God, therefore he had to have moments where he put his faith in God. That means God the Father at times had to take away or to turn away or to put a curtain and not allow Jesus to see everything. So when he walked this earth, he was not all knowing, but he had the power of God inside of him. That's why he still allowed the Holy Spirit to speak into him about people's thoughts and people's uh, motives. And hey, I, you're asking this question, like that was the Holy Spirit working through him. But he had to be able to walk this life with faith in God. Otherwise, he can't fulfill the perfect man, which is fully man. And so he did that, and that allowed him the ability to hold the, the hand of man because he walked this life with us through trial and tribulation remain perfect. And because he's 100% holy and perfect, he also could grab the hand of God and then restore them and bring them together. And that's what we worship at Easter. That's what we're stepping into this week, is that Jesus did that, that he was the only way to restore what was broken for our humanity. And for all mankind. And then he tells us, you will do these things. You can, you can do what I have done. We can go around and have moments like that. God's presence now is living in us. God's presence now is for us to go out into the world and to bring that message. That our relationship can be restored. That your life can be changed. The house lights are going to come down and... Um, I just want to give you a practical picture of what this looks like in your life. Because there's darkness all around us, and we live in a world of pure darkness. At your job, at the gym, at school, at wherever you're going, there's just pure darkness. You can go ahead and kill the light. And I know there's still some ambient light in here, so, but in my, in my hand, I have a, a white card. Some of you might be able to see it, but it's not really bright. But it's a white card. But see, the card doesn't have a, a source of light on its own. Like it can't, it's not making the room any brighter. It's not having any light impact in the darkness. And, and some of us go through this with our own will and our own power, and we're trying to make uh, the dark world light, but it's only on our own. And then there's a source of light, which is obviously a flashlight. And this is, this is Jesus. And this is, not, now the room looks different, Right? Now, now the room is impacted by the flashlight, the source of light of Jesus. And so what we're called to do is to not be our own light, but we, we are called to reflect his light. And so when we take God's light and we spend time with God and we spend time reading scripture and going to church and reading your Bible and, and listening to worship music and praying and getting alone with God, now that has a little impact. Now, now everyone's eyes are on this because it's the light of the world. And it's reflecting, not its own light or its own power, but it's reflecting the light of Jesus. And it's going through the light, or going through the world, shining a light and making an impact. And so many of you are going through life not making an impact because you're not spending time with the source of light. Or you're doing it for an hour and then you're going through your week and saying, well, listen, I don't, you don't understand. It's just the way I am or it's just my character. I have to say the truth. And no, you don't. You're just not spending time with the light, the source of light, Jesus Christ. And so what's happening is you are uh, being affected by the darkness all around you. But here, here's one other point is if you turn the card around, 
this side is still dark. See, because there's areas in your life that you're hiding from God. This side is, you're like, okay, God, look at this side. Like, look at, watch me on Sunday, watch me on Wednesday, right? Watch me when people are looking. But, but this side, don't, don't, don't watch me here. And God is asking you to shine, your, you know, to show and open your darkness to all areas of your life. And then when we do that, what would, what would this city look like if all areas of your life were, were, were changed by the light of Jesus Christ? And we went through coffee shops and Hy-Vee and Fairway and your job and your school and the place of like where, your family, and we all shine the light. And now if you imagine everyone had one of these cards or everyone had a flashlight, what would it look like? You can turn the lights back up. That's how we bring heaven to earth. It's so much easier than, like, there's no hidden secret, but it's way harder to apply to our life. To be the kind, Christians should just be the joyous people, the, the most kind people, the ones willing to serve and help. And, and that's just not the way it is. We can change that. In Sioux City, as it is in heaven. Imagine if we did that. Imagine if we all decided, like, hey, today I'm going to shine my light. I'm not by my own power, but, but by the source. But by the source, I'm going to reflect who he is. And I'm going to take his message around the world and into Sioux City. See, if you're already a Christian and you already have a personal relationship with Jesus, if you already have a personal relationship with Jesus, then you are called to, like, to do something. Hear me when I say this. It, we can't just keep praying and spending time with God. You can't just keep doing that without putting some action to it. You didn't get your driver's license and then just never drive a car. You didn't learn how to ride a bike and then just keep the bike in the garage. Like you're, you're reading your Bible, you're studying, you're coming to church to then go out and apply it to your life. Do something, church. I'm, I'm including myself. Don't be like, well, Tyler, you no, I, my, we all have to do something. Let's, let's pull heaven down to Sioux City. Let's bring heaven. Let's create moments that where, where heaven and earth are overlapping and miracles are taking place. And it starts with just being kind and nice and showing the fruits of the Spirit in the midst of a, a world that is anxious and worried and fearful. And what if we all decided to do that? What would life look like? What would Sioux City look like if we decided to just bring heaven down at, at, your, at a coffee shop, at the job, at your kids' sporting events? Statistics tell us that a majority of us in here don't spend quality time with Jesus. It's just a fact. That we don't spend time reading scripture and getting alone with God, that we are too busy. My wife made a, a choice this year to read the Bible in a year, and uh, there's a portion you're supposed to read every single day. And so what she does, because this works for her, she opens the, U, the YouVersion Bible app and plays the day's reading audio the audio version of it. She listens to it because she can do that while she's putting makeup on or while she's getting ready. With three kids, it's impossible to find quiet time for her. See, but what's a priority in your life, you just do. So if you're like, ah, I don't have time. No, 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 you don't make time. So let's make time. If you're in this place and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, scripture says that when you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that you're a new creation, the old is gone and the new has come. That's everything I just discussed and explained about Jesus taking the hand of man and putting it into right relation with God. That's what you're confessing, that Jesus came to this earth and he died on the cross for your sins to be the sacrifice once and for all humanity. You're acknowledging that you've made mistakes, that you've messed up, that we we're born into a sinful world and we need God's grace and mercy. And when you believe that in your heart, fruit should come from that. Your life should look different. There's things you need to stop doing. There's things you need to start doing. But it all starts with just a simple phrase that just says, Jesus, I need you. Then you spend a lifetime of learning who he is and his character and, and his calling for your life and his will and purpose for you. So with heads bowed and eyes closed all across the room, I just want to lead us in a prayer that just simply says exactly what I just said. But you say it in your own words. So if you're in this room or watching online, you can pray a prayer as I pray that just acknowledges that Jesus is Lord that he died on the cross for your sins, that you've made some mistakes, and that from this day forward, oh, I want to honor you with everything I say and everything I do. So as I pray, if that's you, you pray in your own words, Jesus. I know there's people in this room or watching online, God, and in their own words, 
Let us just say that prayer, that God, you are Lord of everything. That Jesus, I admit that you died on the cross for your sins, for the sins of all humanity. That I need you, Jesus. A simple prayer of Jesus, I need you. I'm tired of going through this life on my own. I'm tired of struggling. I want you to bring things that are dead in my life back to life. That from this day forward, I want to learn who you are. I'm going to dive into scripture. I want to find out your purpose for my life and your plan for my life and who you are and your character and who who your uh, scripture says you are. God, from this day forward, let me honor and, and worship you with everything I say and do. And through my mistakes, God, your grace covers us. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said? Amen. Wow, what a great message. Wasn't that so good? Amen. Listen, next Sunday is Easter. And I'm just really excited about, about what God wants to do and, if, and, and what he's doing right now. And if you prayed that prayer today, we want to come alongside of you. And this is just an awesome time to just begin to walk with God. Maybe this is a new step for you. Um, if you would just take that, that card that's in the seat pocket in front of you and it says, welcome home and fill that out like they talked about in the video. And if you made that decision today to invite Jesus into your heart to be the Lord of your life, would you just mark that on your card and just just put that and say, yes, I've decided. And if you're here in person, in the back of the, the sanctuary on a table, there is a, uh, a little uh, table that has gift bags on it. And if you would just take one of those, it says, I have decided what we want to do is we want to come alongside and help you in, in this, this decision so that it's not just for now, but it's for tomorrow. It's for next week. It's for the rest of your life. So we just want to invite you to do that. And if you're watching online, you can text commit to the number on the screen and that same card will come up and we're going to get this info to you so that you can, we want to help you make your next step. Your next step might be getting baptized, okay? And so, as I said earlier, we want to, you know, invite you to register to be baptized. That'll be the week after Easter. And you all had a little card on your chair today, and we've got more out in the lobby. Man, we want to make a difference in our community. You know, taking everything that Pastor Tyler preached on, one thing we could do is invite somebody. I was so blessed. I got to invite somebody yesterday to come to our service next Sunday, and this person said they are going to come. And it's so exciting. You know, the best service you're ever going to go to is a service where you've invited someone that doesn't know the Lord, and they come to that service, and God touched their life and changes their life. So would you do something bold this week? Would you take this and give it away? You know, we exist as a church for you, for all those that are here. But can I tell you this? We exist also for all those that don't yet know that God is calling, that God is calling to come. So let's explode this place next Sunday. Amen. Would you do that? All right. All righty. Well, we're going to close. We've got um, prayers, um, people that are going to pray that, that if you need prayer after the service, we want to invite you to come up. They're going to come up during the, the last song that we sing. And, and, and don't, don't leave here without, without receiving prayer. If you've come in with a heavy heart and need in your life, we make that available to you. And also, we want to give you an opportunity, as we mentioned, to be a part of what's happening and to bring your tithes and your offerings and to make a difference, to partner with us as we bring Jesus to this community and to the world. So we thank you, every one of you, thank you so much for those of you that are that are, are are involved that way at Family Worship Center. All right, let's go ahead and stand. Did you enjoy today? All right, man, we're going to have a great week. God bless you. Let's sing this song. Jehovah 
Thank you so much for joining us this week. God bless you. We'll see you next week.